Welcome back to WordPress Made Easy. I'm your instructor, Dave Swift. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at the WordPress Media Library. But before we get into that, I just wanna remind you that this is a video in a series called WordPress Made Easy. If you're jumping in at this point, make sure you go back and check out the rest of the course. It's completely free. There are no strings attached. I just ask that you hit the subscription button to the channel down below, click that notification bell so you get notified when new videos go live. All right, over to WordPress. Here is the WordPress Media Library. Now, what is this? and what does it do for us? Well, it's basically the access to all of the photos and audio files or documents you might be uploading to WordPress. In fact, you can even upload video files to the WordPress Media Library. I don't necessarily recommend doing that unless you have a CDN to actually spit out the video files. That gets a little bit more advanced. But for most people, this is gonna be where their images are primarily, or maybe an ebook, a PDF, something you're delivering to visitors to your website. So it's really important to understand how it works and what it does and doesn't do. And that's what this video is gonna take care of. So you can find the WordPress Media Library by just clicking on this media button over here in the left-hand sidebar. We're in this setting right here where it says library, but if I wanted to add a new item, I could choose this option right here, or of course there is a button inside of the main library screen. You might not see this bulk short pixel uh, option available unless you've got the short pixel plugin installed, which we covered in a previous video. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add a new library item here, add new. Now I've got a nice big drop zone. I can literally just grab any old file off of my computer Computer, that's a media file and drop it in and it starts to upload. You can grab more than one item at once if you like. I'll try uploading these four images. There we go. You can see they're uploading just one at a time. All right, great. I've just uploaded five images to my WordPress website. Now there is one issue that a lot of people run into if you're uploading, say, a podcast file or maybe even a really, really large image that hasn't been compressed or maybe even a video if you decide to go that route in that there is a maximum upload size of WordPress. In my case, it's set to 10 megabytes. But did you know you can actually change that. Now, there are many ways to do this. You can go into the code and actually change some settings, but more often than not, you can just ask your host to do it for you. Or if you're using Cloudways, which we've been using throughout this course, there is a setting for it. So just go ahead and get logged into your Cloudways account, go under settings and packages inside of your administrator panel. And then the second option down says upload size. Right now it's set to 10 megabytes, the same as we saw inside of WordPress. So let's up the ante here a little bit. I'll choose 200 256 megabytes. You could really set it to be whatever you want. 256 is pretty big. We'll hit save changes here. Great, my changes have been saved. If we go back over to the WordPress media library, let's keep our eyes right here. I'm gonna reload the page. And now we can upload up to 256 megabytes. All right, we've already solved a potential problem with the WordPress Media Library. Let's dig in a little bit deeper and see what we can do. I'm gonna go over to the library setting right here. Now I can view my images in two ways. Right now I'm in what's called list mode, but I could also switch over to grid mode, which is gonna give me a nice little preview of each image. I do believe this is the default setting when you load up WordPress. So yours might have looked like this from the beginning. Now let's say I went over to this image right here. So here is a kind of low lower half of a skeleton. There's some highlighted areas uh, around the hips. And if I look at the title, it's called hip pain. So they're trying to highlight that this might be uh, an image for someone who's suffering from hip pain. There is a caption down below. Now, if I chose to display this image on my website, often I have the ability to include a caption that would be set right over here inside of the attachment details of this image. Then down below, I can add a description if I like, but most importantly up here at the tops, there's something called alternative text. And this is also referred to as alt text. This will be the text that show up if the image is not rendered by the browser. There might be several reasons that the image doesn't get rendered by the browser, but most often it's either Google themselves kind of learning what's on the page or someone has a disability and they're not displaying the images so that they can actually have a screen reader tell them what is on the page. So both are good reasons that you wanna make sure you have your alt text filled in. It'll help you SEO wise and it'll be a better experience for people visiting your site that are maybe visually impaired. I can also see who uploaded the image and what page it was originally uploaded to. This was on the About Us page. There's also something called the copy link where if I wanted to share this image on social media or maybe just link to it directly 
directly in an email or something like that. I can just select this text, double click on it, hit Command or Control C, and then copy or paste it wherever I intend it to go. There are a few more options down here. I can view the attachment page, and this is really just gonna open up the image in the page where it was uploaded. And you can see we've applied some effects here inside of Elementor. Let's head back to the page right here. Then we can also edit more details or even delete the image permanently. Now, I don't wanna do this, but let's go ahead and click on edit more details and see what's available to us. All right, so here is the image and it looks much bigger here because it's not scaled down. I can see the actual size of the image. I can also edit the alternative text in the caption here like we've already talked about. There's also a field for the description, but most importantly, there's this option right here that says edit image. When I click that, now I can do all sorts of crazy things like I can resize the image. Let's say I wanted to make this much, much smaller. It's quite large right now. I'll scale it down to, let's say 1500 pixels, which is still quite large. I'll click this button and it'll automatically be rescaled. And it's important to note that when you're scaling an image, you want to enter either the height or the width, but not both because WordPress will be smart and keep the aspect ratio of your image intact. So if I'd entered in, let's say a thousand right over here, you can see that it's automatically filling in the other dimension to keep the image proportional and nothing gets stretched out and funny looking. If I wanted to restore the original image, I can click right down here and just press this button to restore the image that will undo any of the changes that I've already made. Over here, I can actually crop the image. So you can see if I click this, I get some little handlebars. So let's say I wanted to really isolate a section of the image, maybe right here. We'll go ahead and make this a little bit more of a square. All right, great. Now that is all set. Now you might notice over here where it says image crop. This has actually been adjusting as I move these handles around. So you can actually type this in if you wanted to get really pixel perfect. But I think most people are going to prefer to just kind of use the handles and drag them around. I can choose whether I want these changes to apply to all of the image sizes. So including any thumbnails that have been generated, just the thumbnails or all sizes excluding thumbnails. So you've got quite a few options here. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at the default setting. All right, now I've got my crop how I want it. Now in order to actually confirm this crop, what I'm gonna to need to do is click on this button right up here. All right, there we go, now the crop has actually taken place. I could also do some other little tricks here, like rotating the image left, rotate it back right, maybe flip it vertically, or flip it horizontally. Now flipping horizontally, we can't really tell much difference on this particular image, but there are quite a few different variables here. Up at the top, we can also edit the permalink or the slug for the image. So right now it's slash hip pain. I, I think that's just fine, I won't edit it right now. Now remember, Remember, if you ever get in too far and you think, boy, I wish I could go back to the beginning, you can click over here to restore the original image. And I'm going to do that right now. It gives me a warning to confirm. And there we go. We've got our original image back and you can see it's no longer 1500 pixels wide. So that's all of the functionality inside of the WordPress Media Libraries image editor. But I do highly recommend that you get everything right and crop just how you like it before you end up uploading to WordPress. I think you're just going to end up with a lot smoother results. Now, there are some settings for the media media library we should talk about. Let's go down to settings right here and choose media. Right here, we're gonna have some image sizes for thumbnails. So by default, it's gonna create these different versions of the image when you upload one. So when you upload an image to WordPress, it's automatically going to resize each file into different sizes. You can have a original and then a small, medium, and large version of your file. By default, it's gonna create them 150 by 150, 300 by 300, and 1024 by 1024. Now, right now for the thumbnail, size, it's going to crop the thumbnail to this exact set of pixels. So it's going to be a square image. For the other two, the medium size and the large size, it's simply going to make the largest dimension constrained by one of these two variables. So it will maintain the aspect ratio and it won't crop your image. You won't end up with squares. So just a little clarity there on how the uploading works. And the last option on the page says uploading files. Now, what this is really talking about is the organization structure of your folders inside of of the WordPress backend. Now we haven't really gone into the file structure of WordPress. In fact, that kind of goes outside of the point of this class. We wanna not get into the technicalities of it, but what you should know is that when you upload an image to WordPress, by default, it's gonna put it inside of a folder based on the year and the month that it was uploaded. So let's say we're living in the future and it's January of 2024. When you upload a file to WordPress, it will create a new folder called January inside of the year 2024. And then when January finishes and you upload a file in February, another folder will be created. This time it'll be inside of the 2024 
folder, and then there'll be a February folder alongside of the January folder. I hope that all makes sense. Now, there are other ways you can actually organize your WordPress files, and we're gonna look at that right now. So here is a new plugin called Happy Files, and as it says here, this organizes your WordPress media library like a pro. Now, there is a free and premium version of Happy Files. I'll just be using the free version inside of this video, but I'll link to it down below. Again, that'll be our referral link. We might earn a small commission if you click on our link. So here's the difference between the free version and the pro version. On the free version, you're gonna be restricted to just 10 different media categories, whereas on the pro version, you're gonna get unlimited categories. All of these other boxes are exactly the same. Of course, you're gonna get better support when you actually pay for the plugin. Who knew people need to get paid for their work? All right, let's go over to WordPress and install this plugin. I'm gonna go under plugins and hit add new, and let's type in happy files. Now important, you don't add a space here. All right, here we go. So as I mentioned, this is a new plugin. It's only got 300 active installations as of the time of this recording. Let's go ahead and install this and we'll hit activate. Now that it's activated, let's head back over to our WordPress media library. All right, so now things look a little bit different. Over here on the left, I have categories. I can create a new category. I'll call this one icons. Now I can just grab the images on my site that are icons and drag them over to the folder. Then if I wanted to quickly find all of the icons on my site, of course, I could just click here and I'm only going to see those files. So you can see this would be a handy way to keep things organized on the back end of WordPress, especially if you're uploading a lot of different types of files. Maybe you have podcast episodes that are going up alongside a lot of photography. It's just easier to keep things all segmented. Next, I want to talk about a plugin that supplements your WordPress media library, and that's called Pexels Free Stock Photos. Let's go ahead and install this, and I'll activate it. And now when I go over to the media library, I'm going to click on that icon. I'm going to notice there's a new icon down here called Pexels Photos. When I click on this, I've got a nice little search box where I can go ahead and just search for stock photography on Pexels, which is a free stock photography repository, add them directly to my WordPress website without having to ever leave my own webpage. Let's go ahead and search for WordPress. And there we go. I've got five different images about WordPress. Actually, three of these just look like pictures of random models, so I'm not sure what that's all about. But let's go ahead and add this to my WordPress site. There we go. Now that image shows up in my WordPress media library. So that's a really handy way to download images directly onto your WordPress site. There's no reason to download them onto your computer and then re-upload them to your WordPress site. Now, next, I'm going to show you a tool. This one is not free, but it's one of my favorite ways to edit images, and it makes formatting images for things like featured images really, really simple. This tool is called Stencil, and once again, I'll link to that down below, and that'll be a referral link. Now, in Stencil, I can actually create WordPress images. So right here is where I choose the canvas size. I'm going to go under Design, and let's choose Blog Post Featured Image. That's what we need inside of WordPress. Now, much like I just showed you in Pexels, I can actually search stock photography right here. Let's search for WordPress. That's funny. We actually get the very same images that we saw in the Pexels plugin, but we're not just searching Pexels here. There's other free stock photography libraries that is uh, searching. So they're showing up. Let me go ahead and grab this image. I've got some text on the screen, which I can actually click and edit. All right, let's change the color here. We'll resize this and let's choose a different font. Maybe I'll give the background image a tint. There we go, that's the vintage styling. You can see it added a little bit of a vignette. I'm gonna add a border color here to make this a little bit easier to read. All right, great, so that image is looking pretty good. I could use it as a featured image on my blog. Now, the only thing is I'd have to actually download this and then re-upload it to WordPress. Well, there's actually a plugin, just like there was a Pexels plugin for Stencil. Let me show you how that works. We'll go under plugins and hit add new, and I'll search for Stencil. Here it is, I'm just gonna hit install now, and then activate. So the plugin itself is completely free, but you do need a Stencil account that you can connect to it. Now, the next time I'm editing a page and maybe I decide that I want to add a photo in, I would go ahead and choose my photo inside of WordPress, and then I'm gonna choose the media library right here. Now, you're gonna notice a new tab at the top called Stencil. What this is gonna do is actually just open up your Stencil account, and there is that image that I created in Stencil. In fact, I could go ahead and tweak it a little bit more. Maybe I'll move this up to the top here or put it right in the center. Now, there's a button over here that says Add to Media Library, and you notice it doesn't actually say this when I'm logged in regularly. It's only when I'm logged in through my WordPress site do I get this Add to Media Library option. I'll go ahead and click this, and it's just gonna import it right into my WordPress Media Library. I'd be able to use this image as my blog featured image. Before it completes the upload, it does ask for a file name, and I can choose between two different dimensions. It does give you a recommendation of choosing the larger version. Remember that WordPress will automatically scale things down. All right, now I'm not adding this as an actual featured image. I'm adding it into the post and there it is. If I wanted it to be the featured image, I would just choose featured
featured image from the right hand sidebar here and select that image. Now, once again, I do have the option to go into stencil right here. I could create an all new image. If I wanted to start from scratch, I could definitely do that. But since I've already imported the image, I can choose it right here and we'll set this as our featured image. There we go. We're all set. I'll hit update and we can see it at the top of our page. So the keys to success with the WordPress media library are to prepare ahead of time, get your images at the right dimensions to display on your website before you upload. But if you do need to do a little bit of repair work, there are some tools built in that you hopefully understand how to use a little bit easier. Now, you might wanna look at adding something like Pexels or even Stencil if you can spring for it because they do make adding images to WordPress sites very quickly. Now, this is important if you're doing a lot of blogging and you definitely wanna have a featured image for every single blog post. Well, you don't necessarily have to contact a designer. You can just go into Stencil and create a featured image and you're all set to go. All right, so hopefully this video has been helpful to you and you now understand more of the features of the WordPress Media Library. I'll see you in the next lesson.